a Lindsay Camp show. Um, a celebration. A celebration of my life. A celebration of my life. A thanks for my life. And um, an encouragement for everyone to, uh, to live their lives completely, fully, full out. All the colors, all the, the perfumes of life, which of course are beautiful, beautiful things, aren't they? But most of us, we, uh, we're blinkered, we don't see it, and we, we don't live it. My work is an encouragement for people to, uh, to live more and uh, to love, to love more, which is uh, the same thing, isn't it? You once taught David Bowie mime and dance. How did that happen? Oh, I once heard him on the radio uh, singing something, and uh, it sounded as if it was uh, could have been me singing if if I had a that that kind of voice. My voice, of course, is my uh, is my body, but if I had a voice that came from my chest, it might have sounded something like David Bowie. In other words, I identified myself with David Bowie like I identified myself with uh, Picasso and with um, with Jean Genet, which is how I came to do to do flowers. It was a voice that uh, attracted me like a, a siren. I was Ulysses, attracted by the song of uh, Cersei. It was inevitable that we, uh, we, we came together, we found each other, and we began to work together. There's a book which has just been published about David Bowie, which actually says, I don't, my memory's absolutely terrible, I don't remember the exact details, but it, it, the, the, the book states that David Bowie came to see me performing one lunchtime in a, in a very small theatre in London and adored me. And during the interval, he heard his music being played, and then he came backstage and said, OK, well, you know, if you teach me to, to dance, then I'll, um, I'll write you the songs. You, went, you said at one occasion, uh, I brought beauty in rock. When was that? What I meant was that uh, I gave uh, David Bowie a visual beauty that he didn't have before. David Bowie worked with my company, worked with me for uh, a few years, three, three, or three or four years. And at the beginning, like any new love, you know, we want everyone to, uh, to notice. Who was that lady I saw you with last night? Or who was that man I saw you with last night? You know, it's very important, especially for me, that they, they notice what I'm wearing or who I'm in love with. The dancer has, uh, has no secrets, but they didn't mention him. They didn't mention his voice. They didn't mention the way he looked. So I, I picked up a, a can of, uh, of, uh, of spray, spray paint. It was red paint that we uh, sprayed the furniture with. And I, I sprayed his hair. And then they said, hey, who was that man I saw you with last night? And you produced the, the 73 version of uh, Ziggy Stardust on stage. I was overwhelmed by this uh, sudden wasn't a sudden success. It's just that I was living in Scotland and Bowie had been in London for six months and it was an extraordinary six months. In six months, he'd, uh, he'd, he'd become acclaimed and had been booked into the Rainbow Theatre in London, which was, oh, was about 6,000 people. And uh, he asked me to direct that, that, that show. Ziggy Stardust at the Rainbow, which later went to, uh, to New York. But Ziggy Stardust was our story, you know. A lot of those songs we wrote for, uh, for each other. It was the first time they began to talk about gay rock. God knows what they meant by that. <laughs> what is the rock and roll aspect in you? It is my heart, which is um, laid bare, to quote Baudelaire. My heart exposed this divine celebration that I was just talking about of my life, living my life and encouraging everyone else in the same way as rock and roll singers do to, to live th these, these moments, which might possibly be our, our last moments, to the, uh, to the hilt, to the, uh, to the capacity, and probably the greatest uh, silent, probably the only silent rock, rock and roll star. Mm -hmm.